Hey guys, Super Silver's done here. Welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be looking at the tick.json, load.json, and pack.mc meta data pack structure for so I've gotten some comments on my Discord and on my YouTube videos about some problems they've been having with tick and so that's be covering in the second half of this video. In the first half, we're going to quickly go over the pack.mc meta. Right? So this is the pack.mc meta. To do it, you start with an opened bracket, right? Just like that. And then on the inside, you put quote pack and on the outside a colon and then you open another set of brackets right and then on the inside you put quote pack underscore format and on the outside a colon and then your pack version number and then you need to have a comma on the to continue to the next line and here you can have a description just like this on the outside and for a string you put quotes just like that with no comma on the end because you're not doing anything else right the version numbers that will go uh pack um, see, meta. the version number that will go right here here are the ones that there is so version one number one would be for version 1.6.1 to 1.8.9 2 for 1.9 to 1.10.2 3 is for 1.11 to 1.12.2, and then these are the ones that are you're usually going to see. 4 is for 1.13 to 1.14.4. 5 is for 1.15 to 1.16.1. 6 is for 1.16.2 to 1.16.5. So 1.16 and 1.16.1 is actually in version 5, so keep that in mind. 7 is 1.17 to 1.17.1. 8 is 1.18 to 1.18.1, and then 9 is for 1.18.2. Now, 9 will probably change later on to have, like, 1.19 in it, but that's not how it is right now. So, you can go to the Minecraft wiki linked in the description to get an update on all of these things. So, that's how a pack.mc meta works, right? When you download this data pack, this version thing will be here, so you can just copy and paste this stuff. This stuff will all be in here for your knowledge. Remember, guys, to watch this whole video. That was just pack.mc meta. Now, we're going to take a look at load.json, okay? Now, these are files that are really helpful in making data packs, and I don't think I did a great job explaining for my first data pack video six months, because I wasn't even sure how it worked, actually, when I made that video. For example, if I have a file named give at, Minecraft namespace would have a file, and we would call it give .mc function. Give acts. At the very beginning of the data pack, I want to give every player a golden act. How would I use When the data pack is loaded, how do I do it? Take a second to think about it, because we're going to go over it. We're going to come back to that question, but first, what is a load.json versus is a tick. So if you want something to load as soon as the data pack loads, so at the very start, you would use load.json. If you want something to run every tick, so 20 times a second, repeatedly, then you would use this area, a tick. JSON. You can see in Minecraft tags, functions, the load, and the tick.json. Alright, so here are some examples of some types of commands we're going to decide which to put them on. Here are the six commands that we're going to sort. So on the outside, I'm going to put sort.txt, and we're going to get some commands. So this first command, slash game mode survival at A. Which, one, which side would that go on? Would that be a load or a tick? You decide, right? The next one is slash execute as at A run world border center zero zero all right got that one loader tick this next one slash scoreboard objective add health and then health and then in quotes health detection right loader tick this next one slash scoreboard players add at a timer one all right and then this one slash tag at a add hello underscore world right what would that one be and slash team join destroyers destroy all right so which one would these be this first one is usually going to be a load command usually all right because at the beginning of the data pack you want to put them in survive all of these there's so to take a moment you're gonna think some are, are more likely to go into other categories there isn't a super right or super wrong most of these are 75 to one side and 25 to the other right so there are chances like this could go in a tick file right it could go in a tick file but it's just not as likely that it is so this one we know would a load usually because it's at the beginning right this would be a load this one is going to be a load right just like that because we're going to execute as the player we're going to set the world border to something the world border we're not going to change every second all right this one also going to be a right slash scoreboard you're just adding a scoreboard adding a scoreboard when it says add is always going to be load that one is non-negotiable when you're adding a scoreboard it's a load or something you're only going to work this one is a tip because you set a timer this way this is how you do a timer with a scoreboard and players add is almost always a tip if you're doing players add you i mean you can add players at the uh, specific players and that wouldn't be 
but with a timer, you're going to do players add at A, which is a tick. This one is of half and half. It can be load, but it can also be tick. If you want to give every tag when the data pack loads, then you would put in load. But if you want, if you have a team and you want to make sure that everyone new players join, then you would set it to a tick and slash join. This would also be, it could be both. It could be a tick for, for everybody to join, or it could be a load for everyone that's there to join. So this, we're going to save, and we're going to keep that there. So nicely done, guys. For your knowledge, when we have a load and a tick, dot json you cannot run command directly from the tick.json or load.json file you have to instead put the name of the function inside of it so for here we have a namespace right tick here we have namespace and then we have tick all right do you see that correlation there all right and you put the file that it is hit. so what this means is that you'll put your tick commands or load commands that you want to run inside of its own tick or load.mc function file and then add that mc function file right here on the inside of either the load or tick.json files, all right? So that's the difference, okay? It doesn't matter whether or not this says load. It just matters whether it's on the inside of the load or the tick file, all right? So this is, I don't know if this will work. Yeah, this is the data pack structure for, or this is a data pack structure, all right? So here we have our data pack and inside we have our data folder. And then inside of our data folder, we have our Minecraft folder and our text gen folder. If you don't know what that is, that is your namespace, right? That is what all of your commands are going to be put into. So Minecraft can tell whether this it is a custom command or whether it's a Minecraft one and it's editing a Minecraft, right? So inside of Minecraft, tags, function, tick, and load, because those are originally Minecraft create, right? And in text gen, which is our namespace, functions load tell raw. Now, how would we make this load tell raw run in this set of circumstances, right? If we have this, this is our data pack structure. How would we make it run inside of a load.json, right? Five seconds about that, okay? Now, I'll give you a hint. This is what it would start to look like. You don't actually need the replace here. The replace isn't needed. When you have replace, you don't. still don't know. I'll give you one more hint, all right? You know what it is yet. If you don't know what it is, that's okay. If you didn't understand the past 30 seconds, that's okay. So let's quickly go over what a namespace is. You know what that is, all right? We know what that is. Namespace is that font cell. So this right here is the namespace as we went over, all right? The unique identifier that Minecraft will use to find out where your data pack is and where that's coming from. It can be pretty much anything, but it's named a folder right in the Minecraft folder. The, rec the correct structure relating to this would be this. You don't need this, but this would be the correct structure. Reason being, your namespace goes first, right? Just like that, your namespace goes first, and then and then the function itself goes first, right? Now, what would happen if you needed several, I'll show you guys this one, what if you needed several different load files, all right? What if you needed several of them? How would you fit that in to your load.json file? Well, I'm going to show you guys. So, since this requires JSON and plus plus, actually plus plus because we're in Java, but this is proper JSON formatting. You can see that there is to add multiple. So these are both going to be load if they're inside the load.json. They're both going to be load, just like that. And to do that, like this, there's an error here. This isn't going to work. We're in the version number, we're in the load.json, but so it has an error. This isn't going to work, all right? You need a comma on. Reason being, so it knows that it has to continue to the next line. But if you put a comma like this, now it's expecting something else to come after. And that's not how that works yet, all right? So make sure your commas are all in the right spot. You can have virtually, like this, an unlimited amount of these, all right? As long as they're all different and things like that, then you can have virtually an unlimited amount, all right? Now, all of these work the same way for tick files, except if you have a tick file, you'd be able to run a command every tick instead of at the start, all right? Nothing inside the file changes except for the functions, and only the file name changes from a load.json to a tick. Now, I have one more thing that I want to share with you that is not on my script, okay? So let me set this up real quick. If this starts to look to confuse you guys, that's okay. So what we have here, is we have our data pack, our data, our Minecraft tag functions, and then our tick and load. Nothing up here has changed. But when we head down here to our namespace with tag gen, just like that, and inside of our functions folder, we have our load daytime.mc function. But inside of that, we also have load command, all right? So inside of that, we have a inside of our functions folder, which I'll show you guys inside of our functions. Right here, we have a bunch of commands. That's like we just created a folder and we named it command. And then in here, we had another command called uh, load it dot mc funk right and we threw that in there how would you run the load and the load it 
right? How would you how would you do that? How would you load this guy inside of a fold? So that is something that a lot of people don't know that you can do. You can set your functions inside of function folder, all right? And this is just a random folder that I created, but it has a set purpose. It contains specific information, and that can contain specific load dot load mc functions or tick mc. It can load whatever you want, but the problem is you can't just load it the same way you do the other one. You have to make sure that your file knows that it's in a folder and what folder it's in. So this is how you would do that, all right? Now this might look a little bit strange, but that's okay. So in here, we have our namespace. Where do we recognize that? We see that right here. That's our namespace next to the Minecraft folder. You can tell right here through this line. That's where our, that's where our text gen comes from. If we look at this one, text gen load daytime. That's because text gen, it's automatically in load.mc function, or it's inside of the functions folder. It's inside of the functions, and it it's not in a folder, then we know that it's just next to it. It's inside of the functions. That's automatically what this is saying, all right? But if we look at this one, we have a colon, and then we have load commands, which is a folder. We know now that it's inside of a folder. And then instead of adding another one of these colons, we add in a slash, and that means that we're digging deeper. We're going farther into the code, all right? So if we had, for example, another folder inside, then we would put another slash, and we would name it folder. If, it, if this was a folder, this was a file, you know, we would have to add another slash to get deeper into the code, all right? So, but you have to remember to add on your colon, or not your colon, your comma. You have to remember to add that on, okay? So, this is a summary of the video and the main problems here. If you create a load function, Replace the function and namespace inside of the load.json. If you want to create a tick function, the function space inside of the tick.json. All of this, right, works inside of the tick.json. Obviously, you can only have this. You can't have any of this stuff in there as well, or it will not work, all right? So, I challenge you, create a data pack that gives the player a golden app in the game, and in a different function file, give a diamond sword. So, in two function files, like, uh, if I did this, basically, if I did this, all right? You'd have two. Try making a data pack with that, all right? Where one, when you load, gives a golden axe, one, when you load, gives a diamond sword. This is my challenge. If you're having problems and you're wondering how to do this, come on over to my Discord server and I can help you out in solving this problem, or I can help you get the solution, all right? Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, please make sure to leave a like, subscribe, hit the bell to turn on, and go down to the comments and leave a comment. All of this, like, pack formatting stuff, I got on the Wikipedia, all right? So you can go to the Minecraft Wikipedia data pack. It's a great place to go for information data pack related. It's a great way to get new information. This is just all explained because I didn't do a great job explaining it in my first data pack video. All right. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, please make sure to leave a like, subscribe, hit the bell to turn on notifications, and go down to the comments and leave a comment. Remember, I have a Discord, Patreon, and which I don't know if you'll be able to download this one. I don't think you will, but I will make sure that you will be able to download this file specifically on my Discord using my commands. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye, everyone.